God. Okay. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Amen. Nobody would argue that, would you? No. Verse 12. Both riches and honor come of thee. Now you get that? Riches come from the Lord. That's what it says right here. Both Verse 12. Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all, and in thine hand is power and might, and in thine hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. Hallelujah. Do you see that? So, wealth and riches, your prosperity, come from the Lord. Now, there is a world's prosperity. There is a prosperity of the world that uh, uh, is attainable through hook and crook. But it's not an eternal prosperity. We're talking about a prosperity that lasts not only in this life, but the life to come. Hallelujah. Uh, so look in 2 Corinthians. Just going to do some basics here out of the scripture so that you'll be in agreement with me that God wants you to prosper. It is the will of God, undisputed by the word of God, that God wants you prosperous. Second Corinthians chapter 8 and uh, verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, Yes, for your sake, yes, he, he became poor. Yes, he did. That you, through his poverty, might be rich. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's good news. Yes. The gospel is good news. Amen. This is not a book of condemnation. This is not a book of do's and don'ts and like the law wants. This is victory march. This is blessings abounding. This is life in abundance. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Now, I want you to notice here in uh, this verse, verse 9, that he says, You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. You have to understand that what we receive from God is by grace. It's not by favoritism. It's not by works. It's not by intelligence. It's not by uh, the ability of being able to buy it or to sell it. It is by grace. Yes, it's God's finished work for us yes. and us receiving that finished work. Yes, okay? Do you see that? Yes. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, though he was rich, this is grace that he would do this. Though he had everything. God is in heaven. Yes. By his grace, Though he was rich, yet because of us, for our sake, on our behalf, what he did, he did for us, for me and you. Hallelujah. He became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. Thank you, Lord. That's good news, son. Look in Psalms. Let's go through a few Psalms. We're establishing the fact that, uh, Psalm 1, first Psalm. We're establishing the fact that God's word tells us it is the will of God for you and I to prosper. To have a little bit of change in our pockets. Maybe a lot of change. In our Hallelujah. Psalm 1. Verse 1. Blessed is the man that walks not in the world's counsel. Oh, excuse me. Counsel of the ungodly. I'm glad you guys got a Bible out there. Hallelujah. Nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. That would be the whole counsel of God, the word of God. And in his law does he meditate day and night. Verse 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. Now look at this. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Shall prosper. Yes. Whatever you do, will prosper. Do you believe that? Yes. Amen. Well, you've got to believe it to receive it. If the devil can interject some reasonable excuse why it's not going to work for you, and you bite that, you take it, 
then you miss out. At least until you wake up. Praise the Lord. But whatever you do shall prosper. That's the will of God for you. Psalm 35. Psalm 35. Praise the Lord. In verse 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Hallelujah. God has pleasure in your prosperity. That's good news, isn't it? In other words, he's not jealous of you getting some prosperity. He's not up there trying to take it away from you, to teach you anything, or to humble you. Praise the Lord. That's like some current teachings are out there. But, well, if we meet bad times, then, um, you know, God's teaching me something. Or He did it to show me something. That's a lie. You probably should camp there a while because that's so prevalent in the, in the church today. Is that uh, the songs are about it, the, uh, the preaching's about it, and uh, the counsel is that. And what they're saying is, and it's subtle, in some cases, but still there, is what they're saying is that if something bad happens to me, they blame God. They don't, they don't call it blame. They say, God did this to me for a reason. Wow. Mm -hmm. And when they're saying that, they really are putting blame on God, and what they're doing is they're calling evil good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What the scriptures say is wrong to do, because what they're saying is that what devil, the devil actually did to me or someone... They're attributing it to God, trying to make it look holy. It's not holy for somebody to get hurt or have a calamitous accident 